Hello, everyone. I'm Zach Rawlings, and this is the Science of Dating podcast. The goal of this podcast is to explore reliable sources on dating, sex, attraction, relationships, and much more. This podcast is available on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and you'll have new episodes delivered to you every Thursday. In today's episode, we're going to look at friendship between men and women. We're going to see our men and women capable of purely Plutonic friendships. We're going to ask, do men and women differ in the ways that they experience friendships with the opposite sex? As well as, is there a good reason to be jealous if your significant other has a close friend that is of the opposite sex? Well, lucky for us, there's a great study published on this topic in the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships in 2012. The author studied cross-sex friendships, aka friendships with a member of the opposite sex, in college and middle-aged adults. And the goal was to see how much attraction plays a factor in these relationships. Now, the first thing that the authors of this article point out is that having close friends of the opposite sex is a relatively new development in human history. And it was most likely very rare to have close friends of the opposite sex while humans were evolving. In the hunter-gatherer societies that humans evolved in, individuals typically grouped themselves with kin and their romantic partners. Now, in these small, tight-knit groups, there weren't There weren't really a lot of opportunities to develop friendships with members of the opposite sex. Um, Even as you look throughout history, having close friends of the opposite sex was a relatively rare occurrence. Fast forward to today's society where we spend much more time with members of the opposite sex in more plutonic type of circumstances. We work together, we attend school and college together, we participate in hobbies and sports together, and we even form groups for the benefit of our children. Uh, I think it's even fair to say that some of us spend more time with a coworker of the opposite sex working every week than we do with our significant other. So things have changed pretty dramatically. The authors theorize that because cross-sex friendships are relatively new, that people within cross-sex friendships would potentially be hijacked by human sexual evolutionary programming and have feelings of attraction within these friendships. They also theorize that because of this hijacking that unwanted feelings of attraction would be seen as a downside to having such a friendship. Now, the way they studied this is pretty cool. They found cross-sex friends, aka a man and a woman, and they gave them both the same survey to complete separately. The pairs of friends answered questions about the friendship they shared, their current relationship status, their level of attraction to their friend, and their willingness to go on a date with their friend. Now, this was really great because it helped get a clear idea of how each person viewed his or her friendship and the ways it was similar and the ways it was different. It was also a great way to compare the differences in the levels of attraction for the male and female friend within the same friendship. So this brings us to our first question. Can men and women have purely platonic friendships? The authors of the article found that it was common to have mild to moderate levels of attraction toward friends of the opposite sex. The key takeaway, though, is that the level of attraction was different for men and women. Men experience higher levels of attraction to their female friends, regardless of the man's current relationship status. Women, on the other hand, did not experience as much attraction toward their male friends, especially if the woman was currently in a committed relationship. So, in general, most cross-sex friendships have some level of attraction felt by one or both friends. The second part of this article, the authors looked at the possible challenges in cross-sex friendships. Attraction was seen as a downside to friendships between men and women, regardless of whether it was mutual or one-sided. Jealousy from the romantic partners of the individuals in the friendship was also cited as a cost to having friends of the opposite sex. Perhaps the most interesting finding in the second half of this study was that men and women that reported higher levels of attraction for a cross-sex friend had lower levels of relationship satisfaction in their romantic relationships. So you can imagine a guy who's in a committed relationship and he has a friend that he has a high level of attraction for. The study says that the man in this situation would typically report lower levels of relationship satisfaction. Now, this doesn't mean this lower level of relationship satisfaction was caused by the attraction to the friend, but it was associated with this higher level of attraction. Very well could be that the man is unhappy in his relationship and that's why he has more attraction for his friend. Um, But at this point, we can't really say. To our next point, should I be jealous of my partner's cross-sex friendship? Um, I think an important thought on this topic is that sexual intimacy typically follows the interests of the woman and that women in general have lower levels of sexual attraction to their male friend. This is especially true if the woman is already in a committed relationship. 
So if you're a man in a committed relationship with a woman, or if your man's close female friend is in a committed relationship, you probably have little to worry about. The situation to be most concerned about, probably, is a man having a close friendship with a woman that's single and that clearly has a high level of attraction for him. Let's talk about jealousy for a second. Jealousy is theorized to have developed as a mate guarding technique designed to help preserve long-term pair bonds. My point in bringing this up is that I feel that often we should trust our intuition when it comes to situations like this, as well as communicate any feelings of jealousy with our partners. Your feelings are your truth, and it's always best for them to be acknowledged within a relationship. Um, Our intuition is something that developed over thousands of years of evolution. And I feel like, in general, everyday life, that we should trust that more than a lot of us do. All that being said, I think it's important to check yourself to be sure that your level of jealousy isn't smothering your relationship. Uh, Trust has to be given in order for it to grow. So there's always some inherent risk in trusting someone. For the last part of this podcast, we're going to talk about those situations where you have a friend that you'd like to be more than just friends with. As we've seen in this article, attraction between friends of the opposite sex is common. It has been hypothesized by psychologists that handling this attraction is part of having friends of the opposite sex. I personally feel like it can be seen as an almost inevitable part of navigating a cross-sex friendship. Now, how you handle that tension is going to be different within each relationship or within each friendship, but I believe it can be done maturely and effectively. That being said, uh, I consider myself a proponent of authenticity in friendships and in relationships. It isn't uncommon for men and women to use their friendship as a cover for the romantic intentions they harbor for a friend they're attracted to. Maybe they're waiting for a person to get out of a current relationship. Maybe they've been friend-zoned by the friend in the past. Or possibly they felt that being friends first and not making their intentions clear is the best way to go. I feel strongly that if your level of attraction is too high for a particular individual, that an authentic friendship is close to impossible. My advice is, is that if you have a friend you want to be more than friends with, make your intentions known. Uh, tell them how you feel and let them decide what to do with that information. Your friend, particularly if that friend is a woman, is going to have a hard time seeing you as a potential romantic partner if you aren't clear about your intentions. If you always treat her like a friend, she's always going to see you like a friend. Um, as we quoted last week from The Man's Guide to Understanding Women, mutual attraction is the only attraction worth having. The risk in this situation is that you'll lose a friendship. But my question to you is, can you really have a friendship with the person you have romantic intentions with? And my answer is definitely no. I say stand up for what you want and let the chips fall where they may. Doing so shows that you value yourself, that you know you have something to offer in a relationship, and that you have confidence in your ability to attract someone of high value. These are all attractive qualities and beliefs it will propel you in the right direction in your personal life. That's regardless of what your relationship goals are. This concludes this week's episode. What are your thoughts on having friends of the opposite sex? Do you feel that these friendships are a valuable part of your life? Uh, when have you seen cross-sex friendships work well or maybe not work so well? Now, Next Thursday, we're going to talk about the science of a good online dating profile. We're going to talk about what kinds of pictures to post, as well as what to include in your bio to give you the best chance of being successful. Online dating has really changed the way that we go about dating, but it's also changed the way that we study dating. It's going to be really interesting. I'm really looking forward to it. As always, we're going to end the podcast with a quote by Neil deGrasse Tyson. The good thing about science is that it's true whether you believe it or not. And we'll see you next Thursday.